Good evening, everybody. And tonight we have the great pleasure of having Hubert back with us. I say great pleasure because Hubert's probably as a common sense investor and trainer as you're going to come across in the uh, investment world. I mean, he does things that are easily understandable and they make a lot of sense. So I'm not going to take up very much of Hubert's time. I'm not going to take up any of his time. Hubert, welcome to the Candlestick Forum again. We're anxious to see what you got for us. Today. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you very much. All right, so these webinar softwares are sometimes touch and go, and so are our technologies. So if you can hear me, just give me a yes in the chat box. That, that'll make sure that I kind of got all my little check marks checked and everything's working. All right, perfect. Okay. All right, now. You should see a slide that says warning. Does everybody see that too? Just type in warning or W for warning slide or something like that. Awesome. That means everything's working. Perfect. All right. So I'm going to back up one slide here and give you the gist of what we're going to be talking about here. And, I, and I'm usually not a sky's falling type of guy. I'm not really negative. I'm more positive than I am negative. I'm, I'm a realist too. So the title of the presentation is the mother of all financial bubbles is about to pop again. Are you ready for it this time? So now I've been fortunate enough to, to live through a, a few bubbles popping, and they're really fun to trade if you're on the right side of them. If you're on the wrong side of them, I mean, they're just a pain in the butt to trade. So I first have to give you a solid warning. Warning, danger, danger, Will Robinson. Uh, trading is probably going to be hazardous to your health and your wealth, and you're probably going to lose a lot of money. I am registered. I'm a registered Series 3 and and. 30, so let me, hold on, i got to fix this thing right here. Aha, uh -huh, give me just a second. I use a little thing because I'm dyslexic. So I use this little thing called a Wacom or a Wacom board. It allows me to write on the screen, but sometimes the thing freaks out, and i got to redo the mapping. On this computer, you can see I've got six 24-inch LCDs. I've just got to figure out which one I'm going to put it on here. I think it's that one. There we go. And that will tie that, that'll tie that little righty gadget to the screen so it won't move. There we go. I am a Series 3 and a Series 30, which doesn't mean anything fancy at all. It just means that I took a, a test and got a 70 on it on two different tests. Like I said, I'm a Series 3 and a Series 30. All that really means to you is I took a test, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I am registered by the CFTC and the NFA. Now, this is very important. A lot of people don't think the disclaimer is important. It is very important. What we do for a, a, a living is very risky. If you don't know what you're doing, a lot of this stuff is leveraged. You can end up losing more money than in your account, and your broker will call you up and ask for more cash. Okay, So make sure that you read CFTC Rule 4.41, hypothetical or simulated. I'm going to show you some stuff that's hy hypothetical and simulated, and then I'll move into the real world stuff. In order to share this stuff with you, you kind of got to break it down piece by piece and go, okay, hypothetically, this is how it works. Okay, and then we'll do the application like, all right, here's how this stuff really works, okay? So it's kind of like teaching you how to ride a bike or how to swim. If I just throw you in the deep end and I go, hey, kick, and you're like, well, what do you mean kick? I'm sinking. So I'm a registered Series 3 and Series 30. A couple of reasons. I also, have exchange, I also have seats on the exchange. I do it to lower my commissions, and I own a futures brokerage firm. Although I don't really clear retail, I do it to lower my commissions a lot. So... Uh, if you guys pay like five dollars around turn, I pay way less than that. I pay like less than a buck fifty. So, uh, and I do that a couple different ways. I own my own brokerage firm, and I also uh, either lease or own seats on the exchange. And the more you trade, the more you'll figure out. Like when you when you struggle through trading, when the drawdowns come, and the drawdowns come for all of us. It, they you're not you're not alone in that aspect. All of us lose money from time to time. The best way to uh, counteract that is to have the lowest commissions in the industry. So that's why I do that. All right, so by the numbers, let's talk about the mother of all bubbles. And it's already popping. It's not already popped, but it is in the process of popping. So uh, by the numbers, worst one-week decline for the market since the week ending in August the 5th, 2011. That was the first week out of this year, all right? There were 109, the numbers of years at least, since the U.S. stock market has suffered a worse opening in the beginning of the year, and the, the, the China's volatility index was down 14%. That was in the first week. The first week in the S&P 500, it lost that amount of money. I don't even know how much that is. What is that? One, 
it's a lot. It's a lot of cash. That's how much value that was lost in the stock market when the S&P declined in the first week. All right. So the, the bubble has already popped some. It still has more popping to do to it. Now, like I said, I'm not a skies falling, you know, ch chicken little type guy. Um, but uh, I'm known in the industry as uh, Hubert Center is my no BS approach to trading and investing. So real quick, what do you trade? Now, I don't have a poll set up, but what do you trade the most of? Do you trade more stocks, options, futures, Forex? What do you trade the most of? Bonds, commodities, gold? So options, stock options, stocks, stocks, forex. Got a few forex guys. Stocks, stocks. So it looks like mainly stocks and stocks options. All right. All right, interesting. So let's take a look. And now, when you say you trade stocks and stock options, what is the one thing that keeps you up at night? Like when you're laying in bed, what is the one thing that you pray to the trading gods that does not happen? Like what's the one thing that really freaks you out? Trading stocks or stocks options. What, what, do, what do you think the most of if you have a position overnight in stocks and or options? Probably gap risk, right? You're sitting there going, okay, if exactly bad news, which, which is associated with a gap, and then you hope that that news goes in your direction or if that gap goes in your direction and not against you, right? So if, if you don't have a small futures account, I totally recommend that you do, okay? A small futures account will enable you to hedge against your, uh, your gap risk that you're going to have in stocks and stock options. And you don't have to have a huge account. You could have a three to $5,000 account, and you can he effectively hedge really, really well if you know what you're doing. All right? So um, there are different levels for different traders, and most of us kind of go about it this way. Most of us start out, and we get really good at losing massive amounts of money, and we call this your burn rate. And your burn rate is very fast and violent at level one skill level. Level two, uh, you, you, you kind of get fed up and pissed off, and you're like, God, this hurts so bad, I need to stop this. So what you do is you slow your, your burn rate to a trickle, and you use too tight of stops, and you get stopped out of everything, and you don't hold on to your winners long enough. Level three is where you make a lot of money, and you give it all back, or you make a little bit of money, and you give it all back, then you make some more, and then you give it back. This is what we call treading water. It's where most people get stuck. It's also where most people quit because they get frustrated because they've already been through um, the hell, which is level one and level two, right? And then level three, you're just like, the market just wears you down, and you're like, I did, I give up. Now, if you can do a few simple things, you can catapult yourself to level four, where the chart will look something like this. Your profits will go from the lower left to the upper right, and it'll have some jaggy drawdowns there, so don't, don't, tr don't, don't trick yourself. Don't, don't hallucinate. Like, there will be some massive drawdowns in there. You won't just go just straight up. It's impossible to do that. And then at level five, well, you'll start making a killing, and uh, it, you potentially can make a killing. Now, I don't know your personal situation. I don't know what a killing is to you. I don't know if it's $200 a day, $2,000 a day, $20,000 a day, or $200,000 a day. And then, you know, once you've made it to the top, welcome to the club. You've made it. Congratulations. Now, once you've got it up, keep it up. So it's the same thing. Like if, you're, if you go from your white belt to your black belt, it don't mean you mastered it. Now, you just keep on keep on keeping on all right so uh, I did give you the blanket disclaimer of heads up you're probably gonna lose all your money and you, you probably are the, the odds are against you there's not a ton of us that make money doing this I actually make money three different ways not just trading so what I do is I do uh, and not necessarily in this order all the time but I'll list it this way trading and investing number two I have a bunch of businesses that I own and I either have equity or cash flow stakes in those things and number three, you have real estate. So those are the number three top ways that I like to generate cash flow and wealth generation for myself and my family. Now, when I was growing up in the hills of eastern Kentucky, uh, I had a couple of things that I could potentially do. I could be a coal miner, which I was like, no way, I don't want to do that. Black lung will kill you. Uh, I could have been a teacher, which I was like, mm, they don't make enough money, not interested in that. And I like kids. I just don't like other people's kids as well as I like mine. <laughs> so... And, or I could have been, uh, I could have grown weed, which I didn't like the, the uh, risk reward there. Uh, in Eastern Kentucky, there's a lot of meth, so I could have been a meth dealer or a cooker. And number, f uh, number five, I could have been a moonshiner. So all three of these, the risk to reward, I did not like very well because I knew I would end up trying to be one of the best guys in that field, and I would end up being in a jail cell with Bubba in an orange jumpsuit. So I decided, like, okay, I got to get out of here. So. 
So when I was 17, I decided to leave Eastern Kentucky. And I started on my quest or my journey in order to figure out how to make millions of dollars. All right. Now, it's kind of weird to even say at this age. Uh, so um, everybody in America usually has the same goal. You start here and you, you think you want to get to the end goal here, which is usually a big, buy, a big pile of cash or multiple millions of dollars. The first million dollars that you make is the hardest because you have to fight through all your insecurities and your psychology and all that crazy stuff that you don't think is important and it, and it seriously is. Um, I will tell you from experience, all the little toys and gadgets and the fun stuff and that stuff doesn't really make you happy. What makes you happy is your relationships with your family and your friends and your business associates. So I'm, I'm, I've worked hard enough and I've been fortunate enough to where now I'm able to do all that stuff if I want to. I'm usually a hermit though. I spend a lot of time here at the house with my family and kids. I don't get out much. Um, now I, I do get out and spend some time with my business associates and there's a couple of masterminds that I belong to where I have to pay $25,000 a year initiation fee and yearly dues. And these are some of the people that come and speak and are either members or guests or we do business with them. Now, the cool thing is I always ask everybody like where they start, how long it took them. And you'll be surprised. Nobody starts here and ends here overnight. Now, if you do become an overnight success, that means that you worked your ass off for the past eight to 10 years. And surprise, surprise, you are now an overnight success. I've also never seen this happen where you just gradually get better over time. I've never seen that either. Now, in the interviews that I do, nobody's ever had that story. You either have a little bit of early success or you have a lot of failures and you get and you figure out like, okay, I got to figure out how to do this. And then it's just kind of a weird, wild journey. Okay. And boom, you end up here and then you just figure out how to get better at what you're doing. So that's the situation. This is a, a picture of me and Paula Abdul. She's a, a, a very nice lady. This is Sir Richard Branson. Both uh, Richard and I suffer from dyslexia, and I've helped him in his mother's um, a charitable foundation, Virgin Unite. He's a, he's a really interesting guy. This is Mr. Wonderful on the hit show Shark Tank. Uh, if you ever have the uh, opportunity to have dinner with him, he's going to talk about wine a lot, just heads up. And then this is uh, Dave Ramsey at one of his Christmas office party things. And then this is me. I'm the guy with this big square head, and I'm never in this little jumpsuit thingy here, except when I have to take headshots for something. I don't know what for. Um, these are the machines that I'm in front of right now. I've got six 24-inch Dells, and then that's the microphone that I'm speaking to you on. I don't have that on. I have a pair, I have a pair of T-shirts on, a pair of uh, Under Armour uh, workout shorts and tennis shoes right now with a baseball cap. That's what I'm in. Now, when I was a kid growing up in eastern Kentucky, I watched a lot of Ghost of Mr. Chicken, Scooby-Doo, and Batman. And I was like, if I ever quote-unquote make it, I'm going to build the big house. I'm going to have those secret bookcase doors that lead to my, my secret lair, right? Um, so uh, in my office, you go downstairs, and there's this little secret bookcase. So you pull a book and push a, push a button, and it opens up into a little small 1,500-square-foot office that me and my team work out every day in, um, and run our businesses. So that's where I'm coming from. I just wanted to let you guys know that if a, if a, a little fat redneck from Kentucky can do it, um, you can definitely, you got a shot too, okay? So congratulations. You're about to witness one of the biggest bubble pops of all time. Uh, you are in the right place at the right time, and here's why. The markets are about to pull back more soon, okay? Now, if you're not ready, you are going to lose a lot of your money in the markets if you make the wrong moves. You have to do the right thing at the right time. Doing the right thing at the wrong time will not work, all right? It just won't work. Today, you'll discover the best way to do just that. So I'm going to share with you and show you how to time it, all right? This tactic has helped me catch some really great moves in the past. Now, let's talk a little bit about Aesop's Fable. This is kind of a, fam a famous story where you've got this, we're going to call this scorpion Wall Street. We're going to call this frog you, okay? Or let's say us. Now, there's this deserted island where the scorpion has killed everything on this island, and he has no more prospects for prey or food, okay? So um, when the frog comes by, the scorpion goes, hey, man, give me a ride over here to these islands so I can hunt down some more food and live. And the frog goes, you don't get nowhere near me. You're going to uh, sting me, kill me, and eat me right here and leave me for dead. He goes, as, as good as that sounds, then that would be my last meal. I'd have to wait on another frog to come by. He's like, no, I'll just... 
once you let me over here, I'll just eat something else. So the frog falls for it. The scorpion jumps on his back, and about halfway over here to the to the islands, the, the, the scorpion stings the frog in the back three times as they sink to their deaths. The frog looks up and goes, why? Why did you do that? So this is Wall Street, and this is you. Nothing that has ever been designed on Wall Street, product or service-wise, is really to your benefit. It is to either charge you a fee or a commission, and it's not usually to your benefit. All right, So just remember that. All right, bubble market poll. Do you think the market is too high, and or you do you think that stocks are still overvalued? Just really quickly, like I don't have a poll, uh, but do you still think it's a little bit overvalued here? So getting more yeses than no's. There's a few no's. Looks like there's a few more yeses than no's, so that's interesting. All right, bubble market. Do you think the market is going to dive lower again? Yes or no? Simple answer, right? It's like we're in, it's like we're in grade school. Do you love me? Yes or no? Check the box. Right? So it looks like we're most on the same page. So let's build a little case for this. So I'm going to use fear. I'm going to use greed. I'm going to use logic. And then I'm also going to use my 20-plus years of experience of trading the market. So, and you can do any of this. You can, let's say that I was supporting the market as bottom. You could search the Internet, use Google, and find anything to support your case. So if it's on the Internet, it's got to be true, right? So let's take a look at some scary parallels. Or not, like a lot of people like to look at these charts. I don't think it's a one-to-one -one relation. So this is 1928 and 1929. This is 2014 right here. So if we go 2015 here and then 2016 right here, you can see that what they were forecasting was, okay, it looks just like uh, 28 and 29, and they're like, all right, it looks like it's going to roll over. Well, if you look at it a little bit closer, it's not a direct 100% fit, but it is close. So if you say this is 2014, this is 2015, and then this would be 2016 over here. What they were looking for is they were looking for it to go up here like this and then crash. It didn't do that, though. What it did is it kept on going up here like this, and now it's pulling back real nasty. The cool thing that you should look at that should help you, though, is what you're looking for is this is probably the pattern that's going to happen to us. We're going to go down. We're going to retrace. We're going to go down another leg and retrace and then dive down hard, retrace, and then we'll put that little V bottom in, and then we'll kind of work our way out of that, okay? So same type of situation. Here's where the, the pattern, it looks really close, but unfortunately it didn't work 100%. It went like this and then went like that. So the, the, the right-hand side of the chart is a little delayed, and it's not forecasting it perfectly, but it is a pretty good estimation of probably what's going to happen. So we've had the, the tech bubble, and now we've got you know the new bubble today. Where on this chart do you think we are right now? Uh, we've, I think we've already passed new paradigm, right? Are we in denial? Are we in a bull trap? We're not, and we haven't returned to normal yet, and I don't think we're at fear or capit capitulation. We're definitely not at despair. Like, where do you think we're at in this? New paradigm, denial, bull trap, return to normal, or fear, all right? So it's looking a lot like either bull trap, right? Because we haven't returned to normal yet. Not yet. All right. And this cycle happens over and over and over again. So it's really cool to keep it in your back pocket to go, okay, where are we at? In the, the personality and the psychology and the psychographics of the markets, where are we right now? Okay. Because it'll help because the market repeats in cycles, right? So, and our jobs as speculators is to make sure that we don't repeat the, the, the sins of the past, right? It's fine if we let old mom and pop investor do it, but we don't want it to repeat it. What we want to do is like we're competing against everybody else, and we're, if you're a pro trader, if you're trying to go pro, what you got to be looking out for your for yourself. So America's most dangerous bubbles: U.S. equities, U.S. housing bubble 2.0, the tech bubble of 2.0. So the U.S. equities, the S&P was up 154 percent from the low in the early 2009 all the way up into 2015, till the end of 2015. A lot of it had to do with the Federal Reserve's uh, zero interest rate policy and the multi-trillion dollar QE programs, soaring margin debt and abnormally high profit margins. So the Fed has now raised us up one notch, a quarter of a point, and now they're sitting here going, oh no, maybe we made a mistake. Let's go negative interest rates again. So it's kind of freaking out a lot of people because they're like, okay, you raised up one time, 
and now you're thinking you want to go negative on us? So you've got the housing market. Another thing that you can actually see too, and I think there was an article today on uh, CNBC. If you've got an echo in your sound, you've got two, uh, two windows open with Omnovia to close one of them. Um, anytime you see flip this house in either Arizona, Nevada, Florida, California, or Texas, um, then you've got another bubble popping. And you can use that uh, to time when the real estate market is rolling back over again. And it happens all the time. It's the same thing when the, the hit series Gold Rush came out and you had Gold Rush and Gold in the Klondike and Bering Sea Gold and stuff like that. Those are really good signals that you're either topping or bottoming in, in those markets. All right? So uh, U.S. Housing Bubble 2.0 on housing, the co-founder of Case Schiller Home Price Index said he's concerned that the run in recent years may not continue. We've seen a big increase in home prices since 2012, and I, I won't bet on it continuing. And he just said that at the end of 2015. So that's pretty timely. Now, here's some headlines that I pulled from the market. Uh, uh, this is like 2008. Uh, this isn't like 2008, but a correction's coming. Okay. A 20 to 30% correction is possible. Has the market really time work back to 2008? 1998 style correction. Uh, China shares tumble in late trade in Asia. Uh, worried about the U.S. Re uh, U.S. recession? It's already here. So here's some other headlines, and you can see when I pulled them here in January. Has the market really time work back to 2008? Stock futures sink in pre-market trading, hitting uh, at low Wall Street open. All right, the S&P is in a world of pain. Sell any rally technicians. All right, so there's some bad things happening out there. Now, in the past three or four days, we bounced decent in the index futures. I just don't think it's going to last much longer, okay? And if it does, I'll show you where I think it's going to go. And we'll do some live charts at the end of this thing, and we'll take a look at the overall market direction and see where we're at and where we're headed. So Tech Bubble 2.0, the rise of social media moguls such as Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, Yelp, uh, Zynga, Groupon, all those good things. Uh, does anybody has anybody ever done any VC investing? I do some of it in Silicon Valley uh, through Evolve VC, so I get in on, on stuff like Slack and Wanalo and Ship and stuff like that. Um, so I've got a buddy of mine that does that, and he's got the insight on on a lot of those deals, how that stuff works, what they do, and these are some of the crazy values. Facebook buys WhatsApp app for nineteen billion dollars. All right, Facebook buys Instagram. For one billion dollars, Snapchat seeks new funding. Would value company at nineteen billion dollars. So when a so when a young kid is offered a billion dollars and he goes, eh, go pound sand, you know crazy stuff is happening, right? So Uber snags a forty-one billion dollar valuation. So here's how these things work. So you've got the angel round. You got about three rounds of those. You got the seed capital. And then you've got the uh, then you got the, the the money grab from other people. Then you have the 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 big bankers come in, and then you try to go IPO. So here's how it works: Uber previous valuation right here. In six months, it jumped 126 percent. That doesn't mean you can get rid of it. You're kind of locked in it. If they don't go IPO, you can't really sell yours to somebody else. It's not a real thick market. Airbnb up 300% in 18 months. Dropbox up 150% in 28 months. Square up 85% in 25 months. Uh, Pinterest up 32% in, in uh, seven months. You know you're in another tech bubble in Silicon Valley when those evaluations are like that. Some of these companies don't even make money. They're losing money. Their burn rate is, well, we're only burning $50 million a month. Uh, at this rate, uh, we won't be bankrupt for another five years. So it's really, really crazy. All right? But what they do is they just try to get eyeballs and members, and then they go, oh, we have, uh, we have uh, 10 million members. Are any of them paying you anything? Oh, no, 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 they're not paying us anything. But we have 10 million of them, and our burn rate is $10 million a month. So it's really, really crazy, and you've got to be careful on that stuff. Uh, should we be worried? I'm very concerned to see many bubbles inflating so soon after our crisis that was caused by bubbles in the first place uh, because the lessons of the last crisis were not learned. We are destined to repeat them until we finally acknowledge the error of our ways. 
Does anybody in here believe that anybody in the United States of America is going to acknowledge the error of their ways or just go into more debt? I'm not talking about us speculators. I'm just talking about Wall Street in general. When the last financial crisis happened, did anybody receive a check from the Federal Reserve or from the government? I know if I was having a bad year, I don't think that the government sent me a check like they did everybody else in Wall Street. Did, they, did anybody receive any? No? No? Anybody? No. That's because they don't care about us, right? So there you go. Where do I sign up, right? Exactly. So we know we're probably going to repeat it. America, the United States, the markets, all the financial systems. Our job is not to really worry about that. Our job is to profit from that and speculate on that demise, okay? So George Soros is betting big against the U.S. stock market. Now, the last time he did this bet, um, he had a $2 billion bet, and when he did it, he nailed it pretty good, all right? So he had Soros recently purchased $1.3 billion worth of put options on the S&P 500. Now, this was the last time that the market had a nice little so he had some really good stuff going on. And you can always find what the big hedge funds are doing. All you got to do is you can look at their 13F quarterly report, which is filed with the Securities and Exchange Commissions. Now, this was his biggest holding. All right. Now, unfortunately, that stuff is useful, but it's delayed by 45 days. But it gives you a window or a snapshot into the thinking of multi- hundreds of millions of dollars, and in the billion dollars of hedge funds, okay? And it's very important to watch what they do. Even though it's 45 days delayed, they can't just jump in and jump out. They have to move that ship around really carefully. It's like a big cargo carrier. It's not like a little dinghy. They can't just dump all their stuff all at once. So he had some really good trades on there, $2 billion bet, and he made a ton of cash on that, okay? He also had uh, uh, bought 182 new stocks, and he added to his position in Facebook and Apple, and he doubled his position on gold mining ETFs. All right, that was the last time. Now, here's what he's saying now, okay? Soros, it's the 2008 crisis all over again. The guy, am I the only one that thinks this guy looks like the evil Sith Lord on Star Wars? Am I the only one that thinks he looks like that? He's got mad skills. And the one thing is, you hear this saying in Wall Street a lot, there are no old there are no old bold traders. There are old traders and there are bold traders, but there are no old bold traders. All right, this guy right here has skills and he's also bold. Um, so he's he's got the touch. And then obviously, you know, everybody watched Jim Cramer, right? So Cramer Cramer continues checklist for a real market bottom. I don't see anything on his checklist checked here. Um, and none of them are checked. So even even though Jim Cramer thinks thinks that it's uh it's it's not bottomed yet, so so we're obviously going to go slightly lower, right? Um, all right. So now that we've made our case with the proof that we found on the internet, all right, that the markets are going to drop again soon. Do you believe that Wall Street is lying to you again? Serious question. Do you think they're lying to you again? No, no, no. It's okay. You can come back in. Get long. It's okay. That little sell-off, that was nothing. No big deal. We're just going to continue going right on up, right? So, all right. Yikes. Yet another reason to fear stocks. Schiller warns, bond investors, beware of a crash. All right, so let's walk through um, measuring the strength of a move. So you got to ask yourself three simple questions. Is it getting stronger? Is it getting weaker? Or is it about the same? Okay. All right. So let me show you how this works. I've done this numerous different markets. I'm going to give you some stock examples in the bond market, gold market, Apple both ways, and much more examples at the end of this. I'll do a live Q&A session as long as it takes. All right. So now I'm going to go into the theory part and show you how this works in theory so that you'll understand how to get the meat in the middle. Now, this strategy is not designed to get the dead top or the dead bottom. Okay. So Let's walk through it. So um, in these old slides, we'll, we'll put the point across. So in gold, I was fortunate enough to short gold here, and I held it until right, until right there. That's odd. I don't usually get the highs and the lows that well, like that, on a 500-point move, okay? And I was short futures, and I was short the ETFs GLD. 
this is more of a, a real representation of how I trade. I was short here, and then I covered right in here. Made 10 points in bonds. That's a $10,000 move on a one lot. Here's another example of how I really trade. If this is Apple. I was short here, and then I cover, covered Apple right here in this area. Notice I'm not getting the dead highs, and I'm not getting the dead lows for 22-plus years. I can probably count on one hand how many times that I've got real close to the high and the low of, of a move, and it's never the, the highest tick or the lowest tick. Okay. Uh, really, really common thing that I do here, if this is a valid uptrend like this right here, what I do is I almost always miss the first 25% of the move right here. So I miss this first 25% of the move I got long here, and I'll either jump out 25% earlier or I'll stay a little bit too long, 25% staying late. And then what I'll do is I'll just get like the meat in the middle here, which is okay. You can make a pretty good living in the markets just getting the meat in the middle. All right. So best ways to time this thing, in my opinion, is we want to use um, these tools right here. We're going to use the ADX to identify the trend versus the chop and whether it's going to resume or not. We're going to use parabolic SAR to trail our stop losses. And then we're going to use the Ichimoku cloud charts for the overall trend. And then we're going to use experience for clues on market structures for you guys. You're going to use candlesticks, right? So here's the order I do it in right here. I go one, two, three, and then four. That's the order that I look at them. This is going to qualify my trend. This is going to tell me if it's trending. Uh, this is going to tell me if it's in a trend, an uptrend or a downtrend. This is going to tell me if it's trending. This is going to trail my stop, and this is going to be my candlestick formations right here. All right. So big and biggest reasons traders get stuck at level three is, number one, they will overtrade, they will trade chop, and they will do the right thing at the wrong time. So I'm going to see if we can fix some of that. One of the most common asked questions I get is, how do you identify trending market versus a choppy market? And it's a great question, and it's a pretty easy one to fix with just some basic tools that's available to you. Okay, So the ADX will help a lot. So what you're going to do is um, we're going to explain what the ADX is. The ADX is, stands for the Average Directional Index. Some people will call it the Average Directional Movement Index. The ADX is non-directional, so it will quantify a trend strength regardless of whether it is up or down. Okay? It, it is a good method of evaluating a trend and can be helpful to traders uh, it cho if they choose to stay in the strongest trends, it will let their profits run over time. So here's how you use it. So it says who, who to use the ADX. It actually should be how to use the ADX, and it's pretty simple. So here's your rule set. If the ADX is greater than or equal to 20, well, then you probably have a good trend on your hands, okay? If the ADX is less than or equal to 20, well, then you probably have a chop on your hands. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't trade chop that well. Uh, chop is hard to trade, and I tend to lose money in it. So what I do is, I, as a, a general rule, I only want to trade when it's trending so that I put the odds in my favor. All right. Do you see a black chart with a yellow and red line with a uh, green horizontal line going through it. Do you see that? All right. So this is just an ADX. This is TradeStation, and everybody should have an ADX on your charting platform. If you don't, change chart vendors, okay? It's a very common indicator. So this is our threshold line. I'm just going to call it the T line. I'm going to steal that term from Steven there. A, a T line for threshold line, okay? Above 20 means it's trending. Below 20 means it's non-trending or choppy. So right here, anything below this green, this is all chop, okay? Chop, and this is all chop. So chop here, chop here. Now, when the ADX is above 20, then that means that I'm trending, and I'm probably okay to do my trades with. Does that make sense? That we've got to understand this point first, and then we'll move on to the second point. So just give me yeses if you got that. Now, here's what it looks like on TradeStation just put in subgraph two. So now TradeStation doesn't put this blue block around the things. I annotated this and just put that in there graphics wise. So you can see here the ADX is below 20 for a very long time. All right. So from February to June, it's saying, hey, you're better off just leaving this alone. This is garbage. 
it's saying you can trade this, leave this alone. You can trade this, leave this alone. And yes, you can trade this. Now, this was actually um, a big portion of the reason why we were short right here, and we also shorted right here, and we have a nice little massive move down here. And my HSIC insiders, we caught most of this move, and then we stayed and we jumped out right here. Now, did we know the market was going to drop a thousand points in a day? No, we did not. Um, but it was nice. Um, but I'll show you how this kind of let us know what was going on. So here's another example. This is an intraday chart of the S&P on a two-minute. And you can see here uh, it is above 20, so it means it's trending here. It's choppy here, trending, choppy, trending, and then choppy. So it is useful intraday. All right. Here's another example of Apple on a daily. You can see this is all trending move. Here it's saying leave me alone. Okay, trade me. Okay, don't touch me. Okay, now I'm trending again. Now watch, notice this. It went down, it went up, and then it went down. It didn't give you the direction. It told you like, hey, it's going to trend again. Figure out the direction on your own. Now, ADX is non-directional, so it will quantify a trend strength regardless of whether it's up or down. So let's go through an example here of Apple because it's a really great example. All right, here. Now, at point one, does everybody see point one? Is the ADX, ADX greater than or equal to 20? Yes or no? Yes. All right, that means we are trending in nature. We're on a three-minute chart of Apple. Now, let's pretend that we've got it pegged on a daily that we think we're going to go up because it's in a daily uptrend and all of our candlestick formations tell us like it's bottomed, it's going to go higher. Then in the AM session here, you can see that we're trending and we go higher. And then you can see the ADX is above 20, above 20, and then it dips below 20 right here. And then we're like, okay, out of that trade. So we could be long and then we could exit right there. Okay. And then this is where we stay out of the market, stay out of the market. And then in the PM session, the the market starts opening again and it trends but apple goes lower so we would try to avoid that trade although it won't give you direction but notice that this thing is above 20 this thing is above 20. it is it's going up here and it's going down here so you had an up move here and a down move here this won't tell you the direction it'll just tell you whether things happy or not okay so adx only solves part of the problem this is how we're going to fix the rest of the issue we're going to add the bull speed versus the bear speed component, and we're going to change it to a histogram. Okay, so in this example, you can see the ADX right here at 0.3, right here at 29. You see this right here. Is it above 20? Yes or no? Yeah, it's 20. So at 0.1, so the ADX is the yellow line, threshold line. And if the green is on top, that means we're bullish in nature. Okay, if the if here on the histogram the red's on top, that means we're bearish in nature. Okay, so in this example, you, you had a nice little sell-off, and notice right here, sell-off, 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 and then it bottomed right here. The bulls show up, it's trending. Bulls show up, so you get long there, and then you exit here. Okay, you could have also shorted this right here because we were trending. The yellow line was above the white line, and then we trended lower, and then we had to cover right that. So that one right there would probably be. A pretty break even or a slight loss. This one is a long, and that's an exit because we were long, 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 and then boom, the bears show up. All right. Oh, the name for this is I just took a very simple indicator, and made it look better, cooler, and we call it the Hubert Center's Power Shift Indicator. Now let's take a look here at the S and P. Let's say we've got the S and P pegged as going higher. All right, on a daily, is the ADX above 20 here at point one? Yes or no? Now, just use a little common sense. Then you go, okay, yes, it is. We're in a daily uptrend. We want to get long and stay long until either the ADX drops below 20 or until point two, the bears show up and we exit. If we were in a daily downtrend, we would avoid this trade like the plague, and then we would just short this, short this, short this, and then short this. Okay? It's not the MACD, no. All right. Now, remember that trade that we were talking about in Apple earlier where we said, okay, we've got it pegged as going up in the daily. Now, check this out. ADX, is it above 20, yes or no? Yes. Who's in control, bulls or bears? 
If it's green on top, that means the bear, bears are, or I'm sorry, the bulls are in control. Bulls, B-U-L-L-S. So we're going to get A until the bears show up here at point one. Okay? And you can see two little red hash marks right there. All right? Now, if we had the day going down on a daily trend, we would avoid this AM trade, and we go, okay, I can't do that one, but I can either short it right here. I'm going to avoid this because that's chop zone because the ADX drops below 20. And then I can also reshort it right here because I'm trending and the bears are in control, so I short it and stay short into the close of the day. Does that make sense so far? All right. Um, here's one of the reasons that we were already short the Dow before it started selling off. So you can see right here, do you see this right here? I'm pointing to it right here at point at this little arrow, point one. The ADX started to rise above the 20, and you can see here on the histogram, the bears right here, the bears were in control. So even though the market was going up, it's going, nope, that's a short. And then you can see it started trending, and there were no bulls in sight. Now, we didn't ride it all the way down to here. We were smart enough, and we got covered out right there on an intraday trade. Uh, will this be available for replay? My audio keeps going in and out. Yes, it will. Here's another example of Apple. Remember what we were talking about earlier? So check this out. So it's not perfect. So here we have the ADX above 20, and it's red. So there's a short, and then here's the bullish trade. There's the cover. So on this one, you lost money, right? called trading. We're still trending. Here the bears show up again. I'm going to try to eyeball this. So right in this area, we short it. Bears are in control the whole time, so you stay short it lower. Okay. Now, that's the first thing. So you can use ADX or you can use the Hubert Center's power shift indicator, okay? Um, parabolic SAR, P-A-R-S-A-R is dynamic support and resistance, stop and reversal signals, and trailing stops. Now, I don't use it for all-in. The way you're supposed to use parabolic SAR, and the way it was designed originally, was you had a all all-in or nothing. So you were long or short, but you were never flat. This was developed by Mr. Wilder, Mr. Wilder in his new book, New Concepts in Technical Trading Systems by Mr. Wilder. SAR stands for stop and reverse. SAR trails price as the trend extends over time. So the SAR follows the price and can be considered a trend following indicator. Once a downtrend reverses and starts up, the SAR follows the price like a trailing stop. The stop continually rises as long as the uptrend, uptrend remains in place. In other words, SAR never decreases in an uptrend and continually protects profits as price advances. The indicator acts as a guard against the bad habit of lowering stops. So here's how it looks like. Okay. Can it be used intraday? Yeah. All this stuff can be intraday. Yeah. Thought you used the uh, cloud first. I do use the cloud first, but I know I've been to, to Stephen's crew a ton and, and, and look at the cloud a ton. So I'm, I'm teaching these two and then I'll teach the cloud. Okay. Um, all right. So this is a parabolic SAR. So if you were long the 30-year bond right here, this would be your initial stop loss, which is a pretty stout stop loss, and you'd stay long, stay long, stay long until you have a reversal. So in this example, this would be long, and then this would be short. This would be long, that would be short. This would be long, that would be short. Does that make sense? I don't really use it that way. The way I do it is if I get in a long here, I'm going to stay in the long until I get an exit signal. And then I'll relook for my new long signal and then exit and then long and then exit and then long and then stay in it and ride it. Okay? So I'm tired of sitting. I've got one of these half an angle desks where I can hit a button and stand on this treadmill so my legs don't fall asleep. So just give me a little. Uh, the stop is too big, isn't it? Yeah, the stop is massive. So um, what, what you do is you can pick a smaller time frame for for the theory part of this, you know, it's useful to teach you the theory first on daily charts because it's just it's really clear. But we'll do live charts after this, and I'll show you how you, you, you dial in your stop loss to something that's more acceptable to you. All right, all right. So here's an example of crude oil. So on crude oil, you can see this was a short right here. Short, cover, short, cover, short, cover. Make sense? Mm-hmm. 
And the, the, the closer that thing gets to the market, you know you're eventually going to get stopped out. Here's another one with the bond market. So it would be long, short, long, short, long, short. Now, I don't use it all in. What I do is I use Ichimoku to tell me what side of the market to stay on. All right. So then all I do is I just add clouds. And clouds help me stay in the trends. It also helps me avoid more chop. And it lets me pull all the things together. So let me show you what I mean. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to go to I'm going to go to trade station. Now you should be able to see my trade station. So let's go through one ADX example here really quickly. So I'm going to go at US. I trade a lot of bonds. So in this case scenario, you see where the red went below the green? That's when I tried to avoid trading the bonds in this area. Does that make sense? So that's the ADX, just a good old standard ADX. Does everybody see that? Okay. Now let's compare that to the power shift, okay? It doesn't tell me direction. It just says, hey, try to avoid this. Oh, bonds are going higher. All right, cool. Now let's go to uh, the power shift, and I'm going to put this in the bond market. So I'm going to go at US. Dink. Same exact signal, but now notice right here, this is telling me, okay, all right, I'm trending, and you should be long here, and you should continue to stay long. See how that's a little bit clearer picture? This tells me I'm trending, I'm going lower. This says I'm non-trending, I should leave it alone. Now I'm trending and the prices should go higher. And then I go, okay, let's add the parabolic SAR to this thing, at US, boom. There's my trailing stop loss. Anybody want to guess why I exited here? You guys are candlestick guys, right? Why did I exit right here? On this last trade that I was in for, say, nine days, so there's, hold on, there's one, two, I believe I was long right there. Why did I exit right here? Why? Yeah, exactly. Candlesticks. Easy decision, right? So in that trade, I think on one contract on the 10-year note, I netted 2200 On the 30-year, it was like 5500 something like that. Okay. Now, let's, let's put the cloud on this thing. Let's see if the cloud gives me any more information at U.S. All right. Now, which way should I have been trading the bond ever since the cloud or ever since the candlesticks got above the cloud? I should be long, right? And I should be buying pullbacks. Now, what I do is I pull this all together like this right here. I'm just going to put this in a, in a, in a big chart. I'm going at U.S. Now, I've got the components. So, now, here's how I look at things. I look at it and go, okay, I just go through a quick check system. All right, am I trending, yes or no? And first one I want to look at here is, do I have at least one to three candlesticks above the cloud, yes or no? Mm, yep, but unfortunately, it's not trending well. Oh, okay, well, i got to wait then. All right, where does it start trending at? Well, it starts trending right there. Okay, cool. Next time this thing pulls back, I need to buy it every chance I can get. Okay? Now, I'm trending, and the bulls are in control. I'm staying above the turning line and the standard line. And watch, trail the stop, trail the stop, trail the stop. Oh, candlestick exit, and it reversed right here. So I've avoided, for the most part, this move right here. Does that make sense? So I'm long here, exit here, and now I've pulled back because I went through the yellow, and then I went to the purple, and now I am actually long again. I'm actually long again, okay, on the 30-year and the 10-year, and here's why. I'm on a daily uptrend, but you see where the 10-minute crossed above the cloud? Now am I trending here, yes or no? Yes. And then you can see uh, the, I'm trending, and I've got the bulls in control, and then if I want to add the parabolic SAR, I can, okay? on the 10 minute time frame and then here it is on the 60 60 does the same thing okay 60 i've got a buy signal here i'm trending bulls are in control and there's my parabolic sar and now i can just squeeze it for all i've got and here's what that looks like in real life on the 30 year and this is the trade i just did today i had risk of 156 dollars and 25 cents now of this recording and i'm live i'm up 1000 one hundred and fifty six dollars and twenty five cents I believe been I was up thirteen forty five thirteen thirteen forty three seventy five let's take a look at the ten year note ten year note eh, it's not as big I'm only up uh four hundred and twenty one dollars and eighty eight cents and I only risked a hundred and forty dollars and sixty three cents okay now that's on a one lot does that make sense that's the smallest size you can trade this is the smallest account that I have that I show 
I'm usually trading anywhere from a 40, uh, uh, anywhere from a four lot to a 30 lot. And I'm usually on bonds, I trade a lot of tens. So let's go through, and I want to see if we all have a decent handle of this methodology. Now I call this the power play. So what I do is I take three common indicators and I combine them for a combination play. And I call them the power play, like a hockey play, right? So I'm using Ichimoku. If I'm above the cloud, I know I'm in an uptrend. If I'm below the cloud, I know I'm in a downtrend. I'm looking at the the power shift. If the ADX is above 20, I know I'm trending. I want to know who's in control, bulls or bears. And then my parabolic SAR, I use that as a useful trailing stop loss. Does everybody understand? Have I explained it decently? Because what we're going to do now is I'm going to ask you for some symbols. All right. And it's not hard to do. You just put them all together. Um, let's go. Let's go through the. Let's go through some stuff first. At ES. So let's see where the the the, the market is right now. All right. So S and P is a short. Okay. It's trending. For the most part, the bulls are in control, and it shouldn't get back above this cloud. If it does, though, I will change my mind, and instead of being short the indexes, which right now I'm flat the indexes. Okay. So let me be crystal clear with you and 100% transparent. Ever since it crossed two days above the yellow and the purple, we're like, okay, it's probably going to bounce to the bottom of the cloud, so we have to be careful, okay? So what I did is I was like, well, the bonds look great. Let's get in the bonds instead of shorting the index futures. Let's take a look at the YM, which is the Dow. The Dow is in the exact same situation. It's a long-term short, but short-term, it's a long. It jumped above the yellow and the purple, probably going to go to the bottom of the cloud, okay? Let's take a look at at NQ. The NASDAQ. NASDAQ, same thing. It's still in a massive downtrend, but it's bouncing. And the reason it's bouncing is because it closed above the turning line and the standard line. It might test the cloud. But notice on all these trades, it's still saying um, you could probably get away with uh, the TLT trade. Yeah. Um, so in this situation here, you can see that we're probably going to go to the bottom of the cloud. So let's go to the TF. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it's but it is still uh, it's not a strong cloud, correct? Now the TF, the Russell, is still below the cloud, and it's not attacking it so much. So these are not as good of trades because they're bouncing. Let's see something that's actually a whole lot better. Super crystal clear, right? There is no ifs, ands, or buts about this one. This one looks super good, right? So let's let's take a look at gold. Gold just recently started trending on six seventeen. Let's what is the date? Uh, 126, 126. Now, it crossed the cloud. Is it trending? Bulls are in control and a nice little trailing stop loss. And you can see gold's been in a nice little move. So we were long in here. We actually were long in this nice little 50-point move in, in uh, gold, too. Let's take a quick look at crude oil at CL. Crude oil. All right, so crude oil right now. Hmm, look at there. We've got something interesting going on on crude oil. And let me show you how well this thing has called crude oil, too, real quick. All right. First, let's go back here to, I'm going to back this all the way back up to a weekly. Notice the weekly time frame here. Nice little sell-off, trending, bears in control, bulls are in control there, mainly bears. Now let's walk this down to another daily chart, all right, daily. And let's look at this right here. So you've got one close above the turning and the standard line, you're trending, and notice that the bulls are kind of showing up here. And it's close above the turning line. So it's probably going to go up here to 35 and see if it can't move to the high side of that cloud. So right now it would be a decent time to buy some crude oil with a stop loss of either 28.33 or 31.18. All right, so... Does that make sense? Now let's take a look at at US. The 30-year bond for me is a long. It's above the cloud. It's trending. The bulls are in control. It's above the standard line. It's getting back to cross the turning line. Probably do it tonight. And bonds are up 24, 30 seconds right now. Let's take a look at the 10-year at TY. Am I above the cloud? Check. Am I trending? Check. Are the bulls in control? Check. All right, I'm below the turning line, but the standard line held, so I'm looking for a retest of 131.19. Does that make sense? So now you guys throw some symbols at me, and I'll go through them, and then I'll go back to my PowerPoint 
and then we'll come back to here, okay? Now, I can only do so many of these. BRCD, because you guys are going to throw a lot of them at me. BRCD, it's gapped above the cloud, okay? Uh, bulls have been in control for the past three days. It's probably going to go higher. Uh, FCX, man, you guys top fast. FCX is, uh, for me, when it's in the cloud, I just leave it alone. So it'd have to climb above the cloud for me to get long. Uh, but it is trending, and it says the bulls are in control. I just have to wait for it to get through the cloud. SBUX, man, y'all top fast. Starbucks is, for me, it's below the cloud. Uh, it's getting, it is below the cloud, so it's a short. So if it jumped up to 58, I'd reshort it. AMZN, Amazon. So Amazon is a short. Notice that it bounced up here, rolled back over. Trending, bears are in control. Makes sense. GLD is going to be the same thing as gold. It is above the cloud. It's trending. The bulls are in control. And with no end in sight, it's probably going to go to 125. Caterpillar. Caterpillar right now is a little bit different. So here's where you have a, a, a not agreement on things, right? So you're below the cloud, but it's in the cloud. So for me, I don't mess with it when it's in the cloud. It either has to be above or below it. Lagging line says it's going lower. And it's also non-trending. You see where it says 1811? So for me, I would just say I can't touch it because it's it's below 20. Uh, NFLX, little Netflix. Netflix is easy. Is it below the cloud? Yes, check. Is it trending? Yes, check. Who's in control? Bears. All right, then every time it bounces up to these resistance lines, I'm shorting it with a stop loss and a target of 70. AAPL, Apple. Apple just recently switched back again today. It's, it's having, Apple's trying to figure out what it's doing right now. So let's go through what Apple's doing. So is it below the cloud? Yes. Is it trending? Yes. Bears are in control. But look, today the bulls almost overtook the bears. Very, very close. And you're starting to try to close above both the turning and the standard line. So it's probably going to bounce to about 100, maybe 102, something like that. SPYs is the thing, same thing as the S&P. CMG. CMG. Oh, this is interesting. Here, Chipotle Mexican Grill. So it's below the cloud, which is a short. It's trending, but one, two, three, four days, the bulls have been in control, and they look like they're going to go on the other side of the cloud. So for me, I would wait for Chipotle to be up here in the 532 area to get long. Yep. Yeah, but I wouldn't touch it if it's in the cloud. I would short it at the bottom of the cloud and short it at the top of the cloud or wait until it crosses the cloud to get long is how I would do it. Facebook. All right, Facebook is a long, it's above the cloud, but it says the bears are in control, and it's not, it's right there on the cusp of trending and non-trending, so I'd probably just leave that one alone. Mm -hmm. uh, B-I-D-U, and if I'm not getting your symbol, it's, I'm, it's nothing personal. I'm just grabbing them as, as I see them. B-I-D-U is a short, trending, bears are in control except for the past three days, and the bulls kind of jumped up above the turning and the standard line. Probably goes to 170 and rolls right back over. Uh, P.O.T. is, hmm, it's kind of weird. It's below the cloud. Bulls are in control and it's trending. I would have to, it'd have to go above 18 before I could get long. M.S.F.T. Microsoft is below the cloud, but the lagging line's in the cloud. I would avoid that because those are conflicting signals. This is below the cloud. That's in the cloud. Uh, PG, Nugget will be the same thing as gold. Um, PG is a long above the cloud, trending, bulls in control. Looks good, probably goes to 90. Uh, GoPro's a short, G-P-R-O, but we'll look at it. GoPro, look, look how simple this is. Look, GoPro broke below the cloud, trending, bears have been in control. Past two days, the bulls show up, but you've got this overhead resistance of the cloud. Any bounce into that cloud, I'd just short it real hard. Uh, LVS, LVS is, all right, so what would I do with LVS right now, knowing what you guys know now? Above the cloud, check, lagging line, check, all right, dead money, nothing, it's not trending, it's not worth my time. I would, I would trade something else that lined up perfectly, because I can make more money, all right? Uh, TSLA, Tesla is a short. I would short it at 177.40, and target would be 141 because it's trending lower, bears are in control, and it looks massively short. LMT. So do you guys see the difference between a really good-looking chart 
and kind of an ugly chart. Like LMT is an ugly chart. Look, it's not been trending for – it hasn't been trending since December. It's, it's in and out of the cloud, and the ADX is going, don't trade me unless you want to lose money because I'm a chop fest waiting to happen. You see how it works? IBM. So if it looks good to your eye, then it's going to be a good trade. If it looks crappy to your eye, it's probably going to be a crappy trade. Right? So this is a short into overhead resistance with a target of 116. You do have a gap up today. But just be careful with that. Twitter, T W T R. Twitter's a short. Twitter is a short. It's trending below the cloud. Uh, bears have control of it. It'll probably bounce to 20 and then roll back over. All right, I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint, and then I'll come back to this, okay? And I'll do it as long as I can before my voice cuts out. Sound like a fair deal? So do you see how easy this is to do and apply? Simple three indicators, cloud, uh, power shift or ADX, and then uh, parabolic SAR. And you can filter through some really good trades by just paying attention to the way it looks. And they don't all have to line up, but when they line up, when they all line up, it's just a better way to trade, in my opinion. It just takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. All right. So let me go back to the PowerPoints. All right. I already talked about that. All right. Trust but verify. Show live charts. Put it all together. I just did that. All right, uh, do you see how this is a powerful way to position yourself for the very next big moves? Now, the cool thing this is good for is it, it'll catch you in the, when the bubbles start popping and when the trends start reversing. So the, the first slide is the mother of all bubbles, but did you see how it's getting ready to catch the crude oil bottom? Did you notice that? And did you see how it caught when crude rolled over and it caught when the S&P and everything rolled over too, right, and, and the Dow and stuff like that? Actually... Let me, well, I've already showed you that one. Um, so it's really good at trends and trend reversals, right? Now, you must have good setups. A good setup uh, that is executed will beat the pants off of a perfect setup that goes unexecuted. Good is good enough. Do not try to filter out all the losers and the stopouts. That is a fool's game and for suckers only. So don't do that stuff. It's bad for your, bad for your mojo. You, you, you have to. Start making some profits before your confidence increases. You don't have confidence and then the profits show up. Usually your confidence is a direct relation to the, the amount of money that you're making. So um, you got to start with really good money management, really good entries, really good exits, and then you'll make some profits. And then your pro your profits will increase and your confidence will increase. Here's what's going to happen to your P&L. You're going to go up like this. Then you're going to plateau because you're going to have to work on your mind and your self-esteem. And then it's going to go up again. You're going to plateau. And you give a little bit of it back. And then you'll go back up again, plateau. All right? These drawdowns happen because you're having some kind of issue with either self-esteem, money issues. You're fighting with your wife or your loved one or something. you got to pay attention to what's going on there. All right? So clearly, it is us versus them. This is no time to go it alone. You know that Wall Street will do just about anything and say anything to make you forget about the risk that you are exposed to in today's overinflated stock market. They want you to keep they want to keep you fully invested and in buying even more stock shares and fund shares right up until the very last point of the next decline when they rip you off again. I want you to disappoint them. I want you to preserve your wealth and keep it growing safely by fully understanding the risks as well as the rewards of the markets right now. More than that, I want you to use these principles and tactics to double your money and then double it again as the stock prices get hammered into the ground. So I want to share with you uh, a, a methodology that I've put together, and this is what's covered in that methodology. In Module 1, how to use the power shift for swing trades and day trades. Module 2, how to trade trends and trend reversals. Module 3, how to use parabolic SAR for swing and day trades. And then I'm also going to do ongoing mentoring and support. So here's how this program works. Module number one, how to use the power shift indicator. Best ways to use the power shift indicator so that you avoid the chop. You'll always know who's in control of the markets so that you can trade on the right side for both swing trades and day trades. One is for wealth building, that would be swing trading, and one is for cash flow. All right? 
That's module one. In module two, how to trade trends and trend reversals. If you get this, everything else is a lot easier and simpler to deal with so that you can go with the markets as opposed to against them. It's a simpler and easier way to trade, in my opinion, so that you don't have to think so much. That's in module two. Module three, how to use the parabolic SAR for both swing and day trades. How to find the best stop loss for you to use. All right? My stop loss and your stop loss may be two totally different things. I may want to take a little bit more risk. You may want to take a little bit less risk uh, so that you don't have to guess or worry about that ever again. How to pick the best time frame or tick frame for you to trade and pick the best stop loss for you to use on all your trades so that you're never confused again. That's in Module 3. Module 4, how to hedge. I'm going to teach you how to hedge your trades so that you can stay in them longer, okay? so that it can potentially increase your profits. Dirty little secret that can potentially make you a lot of money. That's Module 4. Module 5, ongoing mentoring and support. Once a week for the next four weeks, we will meet and go over the markets live so that we can find the turning points in the markets. We'll have live Q&A answer sessions. You bring a list of symbols, and I'll break them down for you. All right? That is is in a nutshell what you're going to be getting, the Power Play Mentoring Program. We're going to scan and pick the trades. You're going to discover how to find the trades. Uh, live mentoring and updates so that you can see this working live. The indicator uh, will help you save time and avoid chop. I'm going to give you that. Okay. Uh, resource Center so that you, you will have everything set up the same way that I do. Ongoing support so that you get all your questions answered via webinars, telephone, and email. Zero risk to you, 100% no bull money back guarantee. So let's go through the indicator. Uh, what time would the mentoring sessions be? They're usually a Tuesday evenings, so that if you have a job, uh, it'll be it'll be it'll be easier to to handle. And I, I do a lot of swing trading. I also do day trading too. But uh, my sweet spot is I usually hold trades for three to 21 days. So yeah, yep, yep. All right, indicator. Be able to identify trends versus chop so that you can trade the best time and avoid the chop. Tells you when the bulls and the bears are in control so that you know which side of the market to be on. You're going to work smarter, not harder, so that you can find better trades quicker with less effort, and it's going to save you time so that you don't have to stare at charts so much. That's the indicator. Now, the indicator works on the following platforms. It works on Ameritrade, which owns Thinkorswim, which is TOSS. It works on TradeStation. It works on eSignal. It works on NinjaTrader. It works on Sierra Charts. And it works on Infinity IAT platform. Those are the ones I currently have it built for, okay? That's the power shift indicator, all right? And that's going to be coming free to you with your course. And it's a multi-chart platform license so that you can use it on more than one charting package at the same time. So if you have Thinkorswim and if you have TradeStation or eSignal, it's all going to be right there for you, one low fee. Okay? It's still just one low price. You do not have to buy another license. No, it's not on Interactive Brokers, and it's not on Stock Charts either. It's only on the ones that I listed. Multi-computer license so that you can use it on more than one PC. So that if you have a work PC, a home PC, and a laptop, you are covered on up to three PCs. Now, it's very easy to install. We have a quick two to five minute series of videos showing you how to do it on your platforms. Um, and it'll get you up and running really quickly. But if, you, if you're not tech savvy, it's not a big deal. We have a free installation service and tech support. If you run into any issues, we can install it for you free of charge and get you up and running really fast. The only thing is we ask is we do installations Tuesday through Thursday. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday is when we do those. All right. uh, who is this not for? If you're a holy grail seeker and you suffer from hopium and if you're a guru surfer. All right. So if you suffer from the delusion that you're going to take a $5,000 account and build it up to a million dollars by the end of May, that's a very unrealistic expectation. That's not going to happen. All right. You are a holy grail seeker and you're a biz op, and you're suffering from hopium. So be careful. If you're a guru surfer, if you follow me and Steven and 4,000 other guys, you, you pick one or two of us, right? Pick one or two of us. Uh, yes, it does work on top, on toss. 
And if you can't make a decision, obviously it's not for you. Um, if you like to make things more complicated for no good reason, please don't take the course. That's not what I'm about. Okay, excuse me. Who is this for? If you're serious about making real money in the markets, all right, if you're looking for a proven system, if you can follow a simple set of rules and directions, if you know your sex, your, if you, I almost said sex there. I don't know how, why I said that. If you know that your success is tied to you taking action, all right, you actually have to place trades. I can't place the trades for you. I can show you what I'm doing, and you can follow that, but I can't do the trades for you. Does it work with stock charts? The methodology works on every charting platform, but um, you know I don't have my indicator in the stock charts platform, so you'd have to have a different platform. There are three types of people. Those are the ones that make things happen, those that watch things happen, and those that ask what just happened. All right? So you have a 100% satisfaction guaranteed, uh, no questions asked. If you don't love it, I don't want to keep your money. I always over-deliver, period. And my goal is for you to get a 10 times return on your return on your investment. So here's where you want to go. You want to go to this link, and I'll explain to you what all you get and how this happens. So you're going to go to hubertcenters.com forward slash big. You can also call the office. Operators are standing by. And when you call, if you get a busy signal or voicemail, just keep calling back and they'll eventually get to you. All right. So hubertcenters.com forward slash big. The power shift indicator retails for four ninety seven. Trends and trend reversals, one ninety seven. Best way to use parabolic SAR, 197. Eight live sessions, one per week. I said four. Looks like I'm going to be giving you eight. Um, that's even better than before. Total value, $988. Discount, special offer only, 297 Now, here's the deal. You do have to act fast because I'm only doing it for 50 people on this webinar. Okay, Only the first 50 people on this webinar will qualify for that. And then once we have sold 50, We'll just take her off the market. All right. So the telephone number is 859-963-3445. All right. That's all you get right there. Hubertcenters.com forward slash big. I'm going to go through some reviews of people. The course was awesome. I've taken one trade, made over $900. Do you think I'm happy? I just entered the trade, shorted again where I took profits earlier today. After you made me greedy for possible further drops, I'm happy dancing. This is the first time I've had a successful trade during a course. I have the hardest head in the world. You couldn't have made it simpler, Mary. Here's one from Greg. Uh, thanks. You're likely the only reason I have kept at this with trading. And now that I'm profitable, I can't thank you enough. It was really great, and I can't wait to attend your next trading class. Thank you. And then here's uh, some from Ron. Webinar series was great. Very informative and, and lots of education. Uh, here's Neil giving some uh, uh, some review saying he made $1,980 and then he made $350 here. And then here's Pete saying, hey, thanks a lot. I really enjoyed the course. All right, so here's a fraction of what you'll learn. Proven on the markets better. Trading rules and indicator settings. Checklist with cheat sheets. With entries and exits. Stop losses and targets. How to scan the markets for the good ones. How to filter out the duds. Never guess what to do next in the markets. Uh, how to potentially minimize your risk. How to potentially maximize your gains. Everything will be recorded and posted online so that you don't miss anything. So here's how it works. Can I take the course at any time? Yes, it is an on-demand course. So as soon as you hit add to cart, you'll be taken to a, a resource area where you have a username and a password. Okay, You can watch all the course material. And then I'll meet you next Tuesday if you have any questions. So you can take the course at your own pace. They're pre-recorded on-demand videos telling you all the setups, all the rules and everything, how to use the stop losses. And then we meet once a week on Tuesday to cover what's going on in the course. Can the live session be shifted to a later point in time? Can't we mean through? Oh, yeah, sure, you can do that. Yeah, if you don't want to do your four weeks right now, I don't have a problem with that, JP, JP or JB. Uh, what time on Tuesday I might have to be working? Um, there, it's usually done anywhere from six to nine. They usually do six, seven, or eight o'clock, and they shift during the week depending on if I have to go pick up a kid or something like that, because I take Mason to jujitsu and stuff like that. 
Um, so it's hubertcenters.com forward slash big. $297 for all that stuff you get for the first 50 people that take us up on the offer. All right? So that's it. It's pretty simple. So I'm going to remove this, and I'm going to just look at my trade station. Now, I've got this link right here. and I'm going to move this thing up here so I can see. And then I'm going to resize this so I can see this. There we go. All right. So you should be able to see. Let me just move this up here. Just give me a second to work this real quick. And then there we go. Does, can everybody see this link? HubertCenters.com forward slash big. And let me get rid of this thing. That thing's driving me crazy. There you go. All right, cool. And then there's my trade station. So you're good to go. All right. Um, is Ichimoku on toss? Yes, it most definitely is on toss. Uh, how do you scan the markets? Will we scan them for... Um, the Ichimoku above or below the cloud first, and then we classify it based upon whether it's trending or not and, and the reversal patterns. Are the computer license good for life or a year? Or uh, the computer license are good uh, DD until one of us die. Either you die or I die. And don't take this the, hard, the, the wrong way, but I hope you die before I do. <laughs> no, they're, they're good for life, yeah. But, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a transaction between you and I, so we're both going to die at some point. It's going to happen, right? Can you use TC2000? You can use TC2000, but the power shift, this indicator down here that tells you who's in control, I don't have it for TC2000, but all the rest of the stuff works. I just called the line and cannot get through. Uh, that just means that other people are calling. So if you just keep calling, Jared and Michelle are taking orders. Just keep calling or leave a message. Don't stop calling, though, because you want to be one of the 50. Okay. Uh, if the stock is long-term bearish but short-term bullish, still take trade? Uh, give me an exact example there, Gerald, and I'll look at it. Is the white line a moving average? The white line is not a moving average. It's called the lagging line, and we cover all that stuff in the course on what all that stuff is. This is a nine-period midpoint average. This is a 26, and this is a this is a, a, a 26 shifted back. Does it work on Schwab Edge? Uh, I don't know because I don't have Schwab Edge on, so I couldn't tell you. Sorry. Does the indicators you have work on Ameritrade with the colors and all the indicators, cloud, etc.? Ameritrade, yes, Bruce, if you have Thinkorswim, it does work on Thinkorswim. Toss platform, it does work on it just fine. Yes. Yep. I'm going to move this. Let's see if I can't move this up just a little bit. I can see more questions. Um, let's see. Is the white line I just called? Can you apply the chart? Can you apply the chart to the NDX? Uh, this is a NASDAQ, right? NDX is just a NASDAQ, right? Yes, yeah, it's just a NASDAQ. ND. Let me go NASDAQ. It's cleaner. NASDAQ futures is a short. When it gets to the cloud, I would reshort that. Yeah. Does it work on extreme charts? Mm, what, what What is extreme charts? Is that a charting vendor? E-Trade Pro. I don't know, guys, because I don't know. It's kind of hard for me to say. I don't know if E-Trade has the cloud or the – you could use the ADX and get by with it, and then you could apply a momentum indicator to the ADX. I just don't know – I don't know if all those platforms have everything. I would have to look individually, and it's kind of impossible for me to know all that stuff. Which ADX study do you use on TOS? How do I set it up? Um, I don't use the ADX. I use the power shift, Jay, so – well, you could look at it this way. You buy the course, you get the indicator for free. Or you buy the indicator, and you get the course for free. But if you if you, if you you don't want to buy and use mine, I would use ADX and put momentum or something on it. That, that'll help you out. Uh, tree, T-R-E-E. -E. Tree is a wonderful-looking short. It's below the cloud. It's trending. The bears are in control. Short it with a stop of 71.05 and a target of 40. Stock below the cloud and daily, but above cloud on 60. Uh, we cover all that in detail. What I would do is if the stock is above, below the cloud on the daily, then I would wait for the 10 minute to shift back down to a sell signal. That's what I would do. Uh, KMT. KMT is a short. When it gets to the cloud here, I would short it with a stop of 22 and let it roll back over to 14. Uh, DIS. Uh, Disney is a short. You can see it is below the cloud. All right. Now, let's discuss something really quick because it's important, okay? And I cover this in the class, but it is very important. 
Notice what I'm doing with my with my mouse. It is a long term short. It's a short term long. Does that sound right to you guys? Long term short, short term long. So I want to short bounces when this thing bounces. I'm not a the sessions are taped. If you if you can't make one of the sessions, they are taped. I don't want to sound like a politician, but this is a long term short. Right now it's bouncing, so I want to short those bounces as it rolls up and over for me. Yes. Could I be successful without the power shift or replace it with something on TC2000? Yeah, you could do that. I mean, you could use the ADX. You could use the DMI. You could use the ADX with momentum. You could definitely make something work for that. Yeah. It's not, you don't need it. It's just useful, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you could definitely, you could definitely do it. You just have to make something work for you. Like ADX with momentum would probably work for you good. Uh, BIG is a short, but but what's it's a rule breaker. Look at it. ADX is going trade me if you want to lose money. That's a dead money, so you leave it alone. Uh, NEE, NEE, great looking chart. See how see how the pretty ones just look pretty. Trending, check check check. Good. You buy this thing here, it goes to one twenty five. WMT, they're going to be gappy here. Um, WMT. So see how like there that was non trending. Right now, it's trying to dip back below non-trending, so I would be careful with it because it looks like it's about to go non-trending. At YM, let me show you real quickly here. Notice this back here because you guys now know enough to be dangerous with this stuff. Why were we short here? You see how we had one to three candlesticks below the cloud? And then you see this right here where we started trending right here. We had one, two, three, four, five candles below the cloud. We're trending right here, and then it breaks down lower, look, short, bears in control, short, 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 boom, and then we covered right here because we had some nasty little massive sell in there, and we were, we, were just, we were cashing in some chips, all right, now watch this, on the ES, it was not as strong, so back here when it happened, we were short the Dow, but we weren't really short the S&P, because the S&P was a little laggy, so that's why we went with the Dow short instead of the S&P. I N T C. I ordered. I am. Uh, I'm going to give it a whirl. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Uh, I N T C is a short. If it bounces its head to twenty nine seventy seven, I would short it with a stop loss of about two points and a target of about twenty seven dollars. Uh, I N T C. I just did that one. Sorry. L X K. Hmm, L. LXK. LXK is, so for me on this one, I would short it right there. Even on this massive bounce right here, I would short that with a stop of about 32 and see if it would roll back over for me because it's still below the cloud. Uh, Carolyn, I'm in. Thanks, Carolyn. Appreciate it. Uh, GG. GG. Ooh, pretty looking long. Look at that. That's nice looking. Uh, check above the cloud. Check trending. Check bulls in control. Uh, above this, above that trailer here. So this would be a long at fifteen seventy seven. Trail you stop at fourteen forty seven. Target about twenty bucks. That's a nice looking one there. B A B A. B A B A is garbage. It's a short. Um, it's a short right now with a stop of seventy and a target of fifty nine. And I don't mean it's garbage, but you know, I'm I'm being serious. It looks lower. Um, a short with a stop of forty three sixty nine and a target of thirty five. W Y N N. All right. So what is when? It's above the cloud, right? It's above the cloud. I think it's probably going to go to eighty eight fifty one. But what do you see on this? What do you see on this trade? You have one, two, three, four bars above the cloud. That looks great. Oh man, look, dead money. And the reason it's dead money. Look at this. Look how long this thing has been in just a sideways funk at us. There's a who who sung that song? We who got the funk? We got the funk. Um, you can just see this is just sideways. So that's dead money. I would just leave that alone until it start trending a little bit better. Yeah, it's just not trending. So I would just I'd pass. Uh, G I L D. There's there's better things to trade than that right now. G I L D. Good little short. Look here. So it was a massive short. It closed above the yellow. Purple failure, that's going to go right back down here to 75 bucks. 
That's a good looking little trade. No, the spools never showed up and it's trending like crazy. LVS, little Las Vegas Sands, non trending. Warning, warning, danger, Will Robinson. Non trending, leave it alone. If it's the funk, it must be Parliament. <laughs> That's funny. CRUS. Uh, CRUS, uh, non trending. ADX is too low. See how it's below 20? Leave it alone. Leave it alone. Uh, I was a, I, I was a DJ. Oh, very nice. Uh, ULTA. Ulta is a short. It's below the cloud. It is in control and trending by the bears of the market. And looks like it's going to go back down to 130. WLL. WLL is a massive short. It's going to go to zero. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, zero. Um, it looks like it's going to go to at least two bucks. Are any of the charting surfaces that you use, are, are any of the charting surfaces that you use license free? Not any of the ones that I use because I have to pay professional uh, data feeds because I'm a professional. That's right, professional. No, since I'm registered, I have to pay all those fees and stuff. Uh, well, you know what? Actually, you could use Toss. You can do a Toss demo, and they won't charge you anything. So, yeah, you could do Toss, and all this stuff works on Toss. So that's my recommendation to you. If you have a platform that does not have the power shift on it, which it won't unless I list it, just sign up a trial for Toss. They let you run a demo forever, and it's live data feed. So there you go, HAL. I don't know why I didn't tell you all that in front. Yeah, just go get Toss. You can sign up a free trial on Toss, keep it forever, chart it, and you can trade on whatever platform you want. That's how you do it right there. I don't know what I was thinking. I'm crazy. I've lost my mind. I'm not even drinking bourbon yet. I'm in. Is the cloud charting secrets included? Um, cloud charting secrets is not included, Tommy, but I do cover the cloud. I mean, I, I don't cover the entire cloud charting secrets course, but I do cover how to use it within the system, yes. Uh, thanks, because I'm on E-Trade. Yeah, so just go sign up for a, a Toss demo account, and you'll have live data, and you can use all this stuff. What is the white line? Cutting cutting out a lot. Beth, it's called a lagging line. DDD. Halliburton is a short, but be careful, because crude oil, if it's bottoming, I would still stay uh, uh, short Halliburton and still it gets above 36. DDD. Uh, D, D, D. Uh, 3D Systems is dead money. ADX is too low. Look at it. It's trash. Trash, 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 trash. It's not trending the good enough yet. Are you using option spreads on these trades? I trade stocks. I trade options. I trade futures. I trade bonds. I, tra I trade everything. You can use it for, for that if you want to, Carolyn. But no, I don't, I don't go into trading option spreads on these trades. Usually what I'm talking about is, as I look at the broad futures markets, then I break down individual stocks, and then if you want to do an options trade on it, um, that would be up to you. Uh, the forward slash ZB, that would be at US for me. That is a massive long. Let's all pray this thing goes four points higher tomorrow so I can make a lot of cash. Everybody go to bed tonight and pray for the bond gods to rise the market higher. Okay, Toss is think or swim, correct? Yes, that is correct. So if you if you have a platform that does not have Ichimoku or my power shift indicator, just go sign up and get a free toss account, and then that way you can chart all this stuff because it all works on toss just fine. Okay. All right, I've had you here long enough. It is nine thirty one. Uh, how about Mastercard? Mastercard is a short with a target of seventy eight seventy. I have killed a goat to appease the market gods for you. They were pleased. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A prayer and hope is a part of every trader's plan. And, I don't, and it doesn't matter what God you believe in or if you don't believe in one. There's been a time when you said, please, dear God, make it stop going down. <laughs> Everybody's been there and done that, right? All right. So there's your order link, hubertcenters.com forward slash big. You can also call the office. While operators are still available, I'm going to give you the link one more time. I'm going to get out of here. Steven, thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. Look forward to having you again. And uh, good luck, guys, and I'll see you on the next one. Hubert.
Thank you very much. Great stuff once again. Everybody, if you want some common sense applications, remember, Hubert, as well as myself, do, do not profess that you use somebody's trading strategy. You take the information that works for you and make your own trading strategy. And uh, I highly recommend looking at Hubert's uh, information because it's you're going to get more money than you or more value than your money's worth. So with that, everybody have a good evening. We will see you bright and early in the chat rooms.